when we create static views in SwiftUI, when we have a, a VStack in some code, then a text field, then a button and so forth, SwiftUI can see exactly which views we have and it's able to control them, animate them and more. But when we use list or for each as here to make dynamic views, SwiftUI needs to know how it can identify each of those items uniquely. Otherwise, it will struggle to compare view hierarchies to figure out what's changed over time. So in our current code, we have this for each loop with ID of backslash dot name. What we're saying here is create a new row for every item in the expenses items array. Identifying each one uniquely by its name. Then show that name in the row and call remove items when you want to delete stuff. And then down here, we have some temporary code to add test expenses with a name test type personal amount five. So every time the button's pressed, it adds a new test expense to our list. So we can make sure adding and deleting works. Do you see the problem? Every one of our example expenses has the name test. But we're also telling SwiftUI our names are the unique identifiers. So our code runs and we add an item. SwiftUI looks at the array before, which was test, test, test. Looks at it afterwards, test, 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 and can't easily tell what's changed. When something's changed, clearly because an item's been added or removed if we're deleting stuff, but SwiftUI can't be sure which. Now in this situation, we're lucky because the list view knows exactly which row we were swiping on to delete stuff, or it'll add things to the end. But in many other places, the extra information won't be available and our app will start to behave strangely. This is what's called a logic error. A logic error on our behalf. Our code is fine, it does not crash at runtime, but we've applied the wrong logic to get the end result. We've told SwiftUI something will be a unique identifier when it isn't unique at all. To fix this, we've got to think more carefully about our expense item struct. Right now it has three properties, name string, type string, and amount double. The name here might be unique in practice, but it's also likely not to be. As soon as the user enter, enters lunch twice, we'll start hitting problems. We could perhaps try to combine the name and the amount and the type into a computed property called ID, but even then we're just kind of delaying the inevitable. The next $5 lunch they have will just break stuff. It's still not really unique. The smart solution is to add something to expense item that is unique, such as an ID number that we assign by hand. Everything has a unique ID. That would work, but it does mean tracking the last number we used so we don't have duplicates there either. There is in fact an even easier solution and it's called UUID, short for Universally Unique Identifier. And if that doesn't sound unique, I don't know what does. UUIDs are long hexadecimal values, they're really long, and you can see them on the terminal if you wanna try one out. There is a command you can run called UUID gen, and it just spits one out, a random one. Super long number here, we've got four digits, then a dash, uh, sorry, eight digits, sorry, eight digits, dash, four, dash, four, dash, four, and then uh, a big bunch, what, four, eight, 12 or so at the end. Um, the only requirement for these things, apart from the number of digits, is this four here. That must always be there in your UID. So if I make more of these things, they'll always be different. They'll always have a four in that exact spot here. But the other ones, the other 31 or so, they're all unique. Each of which are hexadecimal, it can be one of 16 different values. And so if you generated one UUID every second for a billion years, you might begin, begin to have the slightest chance of generating a duplicate. They're so very unlikely, they're so unique. Now, we could update expense item to have a UUID property like this one. Let ID be a UUID. 
and that would work. However, it would also mean generating a UUID by hand, then loading and saving that along with the other data. So in this instance, we'll just ask Swift to make it for us automatically. Let UUID equal a new UUID. And now we haven't got to worry about ID at all. Swift will make sure they're always unique all the time. With that in place, we can now fix our for each. We'll say ID is no longer name, ID is now ID. If you run the problem, the app again, sorry, you'll see the problem's fixed. We can add multiple test items up here, and the warning never appears anymore because they're all unique. But we're not quite done with the step just yet though. Instead, I'd like you to modify the expense item struct here to conform to a new protocol called identifiable. So all we're doing is adding an identifiable to there as a conformance, nothing more. This is one of the protocols built into Swift and it means this type can be identified uniquely. And it has only one requirement, which is there must be a property called ID that contains a unique identifier. We literally just added that. So we've got no more work to do. Our type conforms to identifiable already. So you might wonder, what's the point of adding this in the first place? Our code worked before. Well, because expense items are now guaranteed to be identifiable uniquely, we no longer need to tell expenses up here, sorry, the for each up here, how to identify using ID. It knows there will be an ID property and knows it will be unique. That's a point of the identifiable protocol. As a result, we can now say just for each expenses items to get exactly the same result, which is much better. 